Hello everyone, it's lovely to see you here again for our guided reading session. Today we're going to read chapter 11 of the book and it's called The Rearrangement of Mrs Ogilvy's Face. Now you notice that, that the name is quite strange. So as I'm reading the chapter today, I'd like you to be thinking about why is it called this? What things happen in the chapter that give the chapter this name. Here we go. Chapter 11. This is the letter Scarlet wrote. Dear Prime Minister, my name is Scarlet Silk and I am 15 years old. I live in a small town called Cameron's Creek with my grandmother, my mother and father, five sisters and two brothers. My sisters and our friends go to school in the next town because there is no secondary school here. One of my friends is Annick. He has only lived at Cameron's Creek for a few months. He comes on the school bus in the morning and then he goes to advanced English classes after school. Then he teaches what he has learnt to his grandmother, aunties and uncle. They all live together in a flat above the Colour Patch Cafe. The flat and the cafe belong to Mr Cadry. It was Mr Cadry who got Annick's family jobs at the Cameron Creek Small Goods Factory. Mr Cadry used to work there a long time ago. He knows what it's like to leave everything and everyone you know and love on the other side of the world. That is why he lets Annick's family live in the flat with him and his wife and three children. I know this is a long letter and I know you are a busy person, but it is important you get all the facts. The other day when I was going to school on the bus, they said on the radio news you were sending some more soldiers to the country where Annick and his people come from. My social studies teacher says there has been fighting there for a long time and people get killed there every day. Not just soldiers, ordinary people. The people in Annick's village are ordinary people. Some are fishermen, some are basket weavers. None of them are soldiers. They have no guns but they still get killed. Annick doesn't know what has happened to his parents and sisters. I think it would be a good idea if you didn't send any more soldiers until we find a better way. I'm not the only one who thinks this. My grandmother, Nell Silk, believes ordinary people like me can change the world. The thing I want to change most of all is for people to stop fighting each other. Ten days ago, I declared peace on Cameron's Creek. Since then, my family and friends and I have been doing things to spread the word. I have discovered there are a lot of other people like me in Cameron's Creek who want to change the world. We know it might take a long time, maybe even years, but if we can get enough people to think like us, then there will be no one left to fire guns or drop bombs. In my family, we call wishes that don't matter red kite wishes. Wishing for peace is not a red kite kind of wish. It is important. You are an important person and I think you could help us make our wish for peace come true. We have arranged a, arranged a peace march to be held in Cameron's Creek on Christmas Eve and I would like you to come along. I don't know if you have ever heard of Cameron's Creek. You will know you have come to the right place when you see a sign that says, Welcome to Cameron's Creek, home of the big ham. We are famous here for the Christmas hams made at the small goods factory. They also make sausages and bacon, but we are not so famous for them. If you accept my invitation, you might help the people of Cameron's Creek to become famous for something else. We have asked the Daily Beacon newspaper to send someone along to take photographs of the event. I have enclosed your official invitation to our peace march with this letter. Also enclosed is a wish band in case you are unable to attend. I hope you will wear it when you go on official business to England or the United States of America or other overseas places. We want everyone to know the people of Cameron's Creek have declared peace on the whole world. Your sincerely, Scarlet Silk. On the last day of term, Scarlet knocked on the star from door. Mrs Ogilvie looked through the glass pane in the top of the door. Her eyes took in Scarlet's bare legs, the rhinestone teardrop on her cheek, the red perm on the pale skin of her arm and her maidenly hair spilling free over her shoulders. She opened the door. I'd like to make a copy of this letter before I send it away, please, said Scarlet. Wait here, said Mrs Ogilvie, taking the Prime Minister's letter with her. Scarlet leaned her back against the grey wall of the corridor and waited. She waited a long time. 
Mrs Ogilvy sat down on a hard plastic chair near the copying machine and read Scarlett's letter. Then she tried to remember what kind of girl she had been when she was 15 years old, and it was almost Christmas. And she wished she had been brave enough to ask questions about big things, lucky enough to have a grandmother to tell her she could change the world, wise enough to believe it, to believe it and bold enough to try. When she came back with the letter and one warm copy, Mrs Ogilvy's face was rearranged into soft, sad creases and she said, I owe you an apology, Scarlet Silk, and I hope your wish comes true. All the chapters in the book have very specific titles and they mean different things. So chapter one was called Red Kite Kind of Wishes and it was called that because in this chapter we learnt about what a red kite kind of wish was. Chapter five was called the Plum Pudding Planetarium and it was called that because in the chapter they made lots of plum puddings and they hung them from the ceiling and it looked like the solar system. And chapter 10 was called Black Tights and Band-Aids. You remember that Scarlett had used her tights to make some armbands um, for her, her um, when she wanted to uh, show that she'd declared peace on Cameron's Creek. And she bought plasters, that's another word for a band-aid, for her feet. So I'd like us to think about why is chapter 11 that we've just read today called The Rearrangement of Mrs Ogilvy's Face? Why do you think it's called this? What has actually been happening in the story? A change of face. What has changed for Mrs Ogilvy? Pause the video and have a think and jot down some ideas. Um, I will be putting on the screen a page from the book if you need some clues. That will be at the end end of this little clip here. Have a look, see if you can work out some answers and have a go at using the sentence starter at the bottom of the page to help you write your answer. Good luck with this. Your next task for today is to think about why Mrs Ogilvy apologised to Scarlett. What had happened in the story that made her change her mind about the way she viewed Scarlett? Have a look at the text if you need to on the previous screen on this video and then see if you can have a go at answering the question using the sentence starter. I think Mrs Ogilvy apologised because... When you've done that, if you'd like an extra challenge, I challenge you to have a look through some of your own reading books and see if the chapters in those books have names. Do the names of the chapters relate to things that have happened in the book? And if so, what? If you'd like to take up this challenge, also write down your evidence for those and I look forward to seeing what you found out later. Good luck with the activities today. I hope you've enjoyed them and I will see you again tomorrow for some more of our story. Bye for now.